One day he was walking on the streets of Kufa. He finds a beggar, someone who's begging on the street. His question was, what is this? They told him, Ya Imam Ali, Ya Amir al muminin he is a Christian man, he's not a Muslim. He used to work, but now that he's grown older, you know, he doesn't have a job, so that's why he's begging on the street. He says, you guys worked with him when he was young and had the energy, and now that he's older, you let him beg on the streets? That doesn't happen in my state. And he turns to his minister of finance, if we may call that, secretary of finance, and he tells him, you immediately find him a house, and you assign him a monthly salary that will suffice him and his family. And notice, Imam Ali salam did not ask, who is this? That was the answer he was given. He is a Christian man, but he didn't ask, who is this? His question was, what is this? In other words, what is this phenomena? Why do I see a beggar on the street? That is something strange. That is not something common. It's something unique which suggests there were no beggars at the time of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. No people who were in poverty. And when he notices something that looked different, it was not something used, you know, he was used to. So he immediately dealt with it. He dealt with people justly, fairly, kindly, mercifully. And one group of people that he really looked after were the orphans. Orphans. They don't have a father to look after them. That's why my brothers and sisters, if you guys can sponsor orphans, go ahead and do so. The time of Eid, inshallah, Eid is coming pretty soon. Many of us, alhamdulillah, we are blessed with parents who can buy us some gifts on the time of Eid. They present us with some presents and we celebrate with them. But there are millions of children out there, unfortunately, who've lost their parents or who've lost their father. And they don't have anyone to bring them nice clothing. They see people celebrating, but they don't have, which is very painful. God forbid, but try to put yourself in their shoes. Imagine you see other people, they're wearing nice clothes, they're celebrating, and you can't afford it. And you're still wearing your old clothes. If you can, help. Send them a Eid basket, Eid present, Eid gift. Try to sponsor them. Even when he was on his deathbed, he told Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, alayhim as salam, Allah, Allah bil aytam. Take care of the orphans. And this message was not for Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. This message was for us. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, alayhim as salam, they don't need to be reminded to take care of the orphans. We do. So when he was struck, salamullahi alayhi, by the sword of Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam, and he was brought to his house. The orphans of the city of Kufa learned that their protector, their helper, their supporter has been hurt. So they gather around his house. They gather around his door and they start crying. Where is our father? That's what they used to call him. Father, because he was like a father figure to them. He would come to them, as I mentioned last night in one of the stories, where he would come and feed them himself with his own hands. He would play with them. He would take care of them. He would feed them. He would look after them. So they felt that he is just like their father. So they gathered around his house, crying, where is our father? Imam al Hassan salamullahi alayhi came out. He sees all these orphans gathered around his house. And he cries. And he says, go pray for Amir al muminin salamullahi alayhi. Go make dua that may Allah cure him. He's in pain. The sword of Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam that struck Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was kept poisoned with a very severe poison. So Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein alayhim as bring a doctor and they tell him, 
Can you examine our father? Amir al Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi. The doctor takes a specific vein from the kidney of a sheep. He takes this vein and he inserts it into the wound of Amir al Mu'mineen, alayhi salam. Then he picks it up. He looks at it and he starts crying. They tell him, what is the matter? He turns to Imam Ali alayhi salam and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I'ahad ahdak wa awsi wasiyyatak fa inna dharbata hadha al-la'een wasalat ila ummi ra'sik. He says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, make your will. Whatever you wish to say to your family, go ahead and say it. Bid your farewell to them. The poison has gone too deep into your body. You are not going to survive this one. When Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein heard this, they started crying. And when the doctor left, Zainab alayhi salam came into the room along with, his, with her sister, Umm Kulthum, and they both started weeping. Aywa abatah, aywa aliyah. Who will look after us, my father? Who will look after the children? Who will look after the orphans? He looked at them and he says, My dear children, do not cry. I'm going to a better place. I'm going to join your grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and your mother Fatima alayhi salam. I've invested all these years in pain. I lived in pain. But now I'm going to go to Jannah, insha'Allah. I'm going to paradise where I'll be relaxing. One of the companions of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam was sitting behind the door. When he heard the cries, he also started crying. Imam al Hassan came out and said, Why are you sitting here? He said, Oh, son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, please forgive me. But I could not leave until I see my master, Amir al Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi. He says, Okay, let me make way for you. Imam al Hassan goes inside. A little while later, comes out and says, Come in. He goes in. He sees Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, I saw his face so pale, so yellow. I told him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, can I see your wound? He said, Yes. He showed me his wound. He said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Inshallah, you will survive this one. You fought in major battles. You're like the hero of every war that you fought in. This is just a minor wound. He said, no, it's not. He said, soon I'll be leaving you. And I'll be joining my beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. I'm going from this world. So the companions started crying. The children started crying. Then he left. In a little while later, as Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was on his deathbed, Zainab alayhi salam walks in. She says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, I want to ask you a question, but I know you're in a difficult state right now. He says, Go ahead, my beloved daughter. What question do you want to ask? She said, I heard the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, Umm Ayman, saying a tradition that she heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. The minute he heard this, he cried. He said, what did you hear her saying? What did she hear from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi? She said, I heard her saying that she heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi says, that on the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein will be all alone in Karbala and he will be killed in Karbala. Is that true, my, my father? I want to ask you, is that true? Imam Amir al Mu'mineen cried and he said, Yes, my, my beloved daughter Zainab, that is true. Your brother Hussein one day will be all alone in Karbala. I will not be there. His brother Imam al Hassan will not be there. No one will be with him, but you will be with him, Ya Zainab. She said, I'm going to be with him. He said, yes, Ya Zainab, you will be with him. Then what's going to happen to me? Amir al-Mu'mineen then cried even further. 
And he said, Ya Zainab, you will become a prisoner for Bani Umayyah. Hussein will be killed. Your brother Abbas will be killed. You will be all alone with no helper and no supporter and no protector except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, what else my father? Tell me, prepare me. He then cried and he said, my, my daughter Zainab, you know how you are now in Kufa. You're going to come back to the city of Kufa again. Will I? Yes, my, yes, my dear Zainab, because you will be in Karbala. They will take you as a prisoner and bring you to Kufa. But at that time, there will be no men with you from Bani Hashim. You will be all alone with the enemies of Allah from Bani Umayyah and from Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and the people of Kufa looking at you my beloved Zainab at that time I want you to be strong to remain strong and to look after the children and the women of Abi Abdullah al Hussein and Amir al muminin Salamullah alayhi remained in the state Zainab Salamullah alayha cried Aywa Abata Aywa Aliya أيوة ضيعته بعدك إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين